If you're someone who has an RX 9070 XT and you've noticed some fairly high power draw and or temps while gaming, you'll definitely want to consider what I'm about to show you in this video. In my full review, I praised the card's strong raster performance and value, but let's be real, the power efficiency was rough, especially when compared to Nvidia's RTX 5070 Ti. But what if I told you there is a way to tame this GPU, lowering power, temps, and noise without losing a single frame? In fact, I was able to match or in some cases even beat stock performance. All the while pulling way less power. Let's discuss that in this video. Alright guys, a quick shout out to EZSMX for sponsoring today's video with their awesome DO5 multi-platform gaming controller. This thing feels incredible, built with premium Hall effect joysticks and triggers, giving you precise, drift-free controls that'll seriously step up your gaming experience. Plus, with a lightning-fast 1000Hz polling rate, your inputs register instantly, giving you that competitive edge. It works flawlessly across multiple platforms, PC, Switch, Android, and even iOS. You also get this sleek smart charging dock, which houses the dongle, keeping your setup clean clean while ensuring the controller is always ready to go. Honestly, the design, ergonomics, and weight are spot on. It feels just like an Xbox controller you already know and love, but with even better durability, responsiveness, thanks to those Hall Effect sensors. And let's not forget about the customizable RGB lighting on the joysticks. You can tweak the colors and effect to match your style, adding a personal touch to your gaming setup. If you're tired of stick drift and want a controller built to last, then check out EZSMX's DO5. Hit the link in the video description below, use my exclusive promo code to grab yours, and up upgrade your gaming setup. Big thanks again to EZSMX for supporting the channel. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Today we're going to be revisiting the RX 9070 XT, but this time with a very different objective. Instead of just raw performance benchmarking, we're going to focus on optimizing this GPU by undervolting and power limiting it. Now if you saw my original review, you'll remember that while I was genuinely impressed with the performance per dollar this card offers, especially in rasterized heavy titles, one of my biggest criticisms was its power efficiency, or rather the lack of it. Even when both the 9070 XT and the RT X5070 Ti were overclocked, the 9070 XT was pulling over 100 watts more in some scenarios, and that could be a pretty serious deal breaker for many. And that kind of excessive power draw doesn't just impact your electricity bill, it also means more heat, more noise, and potentially reduced lifespan over time, especially in compact or thermally limited builds. And I was seeing some folks comment about that, highlighting that they don't like how much more power the 9070 XT was consuming compared to the Nvidia option. And I agree, and I said this in my previous video where we explored undervolting the 5070 Ti, it seems like GPU power draw just keeps going up and up across the whole stack every generation, where not too long ago flagship GPUs 80 Ti class cards were consuming 250 watts, and now we're seeing mid-range or mainstream cards pulling over 300 watts, and that's supposed to be considered the norm? I don't like it, we're going backwards, and I'm hoping that this is an area of focus for next generation cards, because if this keeps up, then we'll have a mainstream card pulling as much power as the 5090, and you all know what that entails. But here's the thing, AMD has actually given us a fair amount of control with their drivers and tuning tools, so the goal of this video is simple. We're going to bring this card's power consumption considerably lower without sacrificing gaming performance. Using AMD's Adrenaline software, I've spent a good chunk of my time dialing in a stable undervolt and a custom power target, testing the results across a wide range of titles. And I think many of you will be surprised at just how efficient this GPU can become with just a few clicks. Whether you're looking to build a quieter rig, keeping temps in check, or just maximizing the efficiency of your setup, this is a tweak that's worth trying. For my sample, which is from Sapphire, this is their pure edition of the 9070 XT, I was able to dial in the following settings. I used a negative 85 millivolt offset for the GPU core, and I had set a negative 15 power offset as well. In my review, I had used the same undervolt, but I had extended the power limit by 10%. I've also got I've also got the memory overclocked to 2668 MHz with fast timings enabled, along with a custom fan curve, and I found these settings to be stable on my GPU, as you'll see in just a moment, they're totally beneficial. So what we'll be doing is similar to what we did in my 5070 Ti undervolting video where we'll go over 10 games and I'll have side-by-side -side comparisons of the overclocked, undervolted, plus power limited, and stock configurations. To save us some time, I'll have the video description with the full system specs. So let's take a look at our first game and that is Spider-Man 2. After going through the updated results from this game at 1440p with very high settings, it's pretty wild to see how close the performance numbers are across the board. The undervolted Voltage and power limited 9070 XT pulls off an impressive 152 FPS with averages at 85, matching the overclocked configuration almost identically, all the while consuming noticeably less power. Stock performance comes in just a couple of frames behind at 150 FPS with the same 1% lows as the OC config, but power usage jumps back up to 310 to 330 watts. 
that makes the undervolt feel like a total win, maintaining top tier performance while cutting nearly 60 watts of power and shaving a few degrees off in thermals as well. This is exactly the kind of results you want to see when tweaking for efficiency, no compromise gameplay with significantly better power characteristics. When putting the undervolted RX 9070 XT head-to-head -head with my undervolted RTX 5070 Ti in Spider-Man 2 at 1440p very high, the 9070 XT clearly comes out ahead, it delivers an average of 152 FPS with 1% lows at 85, while the 5070 Ti trails behind at 138 FPS on average and 69 for the 1% lows. That's a solid 10% uplift in both average and low-end performance, however this extra performance still comes at a notable power cost. The 9070 XT pulls around 270 watts, whereas the 5070 Ti operates at nearly 100 watts less, so while AMD does win out in raw frames, it continues to lag behind in power efficiency. In Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, running at 1440p Ultra, undervolting the 9070 XT while applying an 85% power limit yields excellent efficiency gains with practically no noticeable loss in performance, just a 3% drop from the overclocked setup. More impressively, power consumption drops by nearly 80 watts compared to the maxed out OC scenario, all the while maintaining smooth frame pacing and competitive 1% lows. This proves that even in demanding open world RPGs like this, you don't need to redline the GPU for an optimal experience. When we bring the 5070 Ti undervolted into the mix, it clearly Clearly pulls ahead, we're looking at around a 14% performance advantage in average FPS and 17% for the 1% lows when compared to the 9070 XT. On top of that, we're seeing the 5070 Ti consume like 70 to 80 watts less, so much better performance per watt for Team Green here. In Monster Hunter Wilds at 1440p, we see another solid showing for the undervolted and power limited 9070 XT. Despite dropping power usage by around 50 watts compared to stock, the undervolted and power limited setup maintains nearly identical performance, trailing by only about 2%. Meanwhile, the overclock setup pushes out slightly higher FPS but comes at a steep cost, pulling nearly 70 watts more than the optimized power tune configuration. Once again, efficiency wins here with the undervolt providing nearly the same experience as stock while significantly easing the power draw in thermals. Now looking at the undervolted comparison between the 5070 Ti and the 9070 XT, we see the AMD card pull ahead with a solid 10% lead in average FPS and 6% uplift in 1% lows. However, it comes at a cost. The 9070 XT is drawing over 100 watts more on average despite both cards being tuned for efficiency. Efficiency. While it is a clear win for the 9070 XT on raw performance, that power to performance ratio still leaves something to be desired when comparing to Nvidia's efficiency. Looking at the results from Indiana Jones in the Great Circle, running at 1440p Ultra, the Power Tune 9070 XT config pulls off a pretty solid win in terms of efficiency. Performance only drops by around 8% compared to the overclocked settings, which is a small price to pay when you consider the power consumption drops by nearly 70 watts. And despite that power cut, the 1% lows remain just as stable, showing that this tuning method doesn't compromise fluidity, it's a great example of how you can get close to max performance while keeping temps and noise much more manageable. Indiana Jones in the Great Circle showcases the strength strength of NVIDIA's architecture and ray trace titles. The 5070 Ti comes in nearly 22% faster on average with substantially higher 1% lows. Despite this commanding lead, it still sips just 200 watts, while the RX 9070 XT lags behind while drawing about 65 watts more. So this is one of the clearest cases where NVIDIA's ray tracing advantage and power efficiency shine. In Stalker 2, power limiting the 9070 XT to 85% and undervolting it delivers a negligible 1% performance gain over stock, which is within margin of error. However, it manages to cut around 20 watts of power on average, helping to keep temps a few degrees lower. Not a massive difference overall, but still a nice balance for those looking to improve efficiency without really sacrificing frames. Now when we compare it to the 5070 Ti's undervolted configuration, it maintains a noticeable advantage here, leading by around 9% on average, but a uh, hair on the 1% lows. Despite the stronger performance, the 5070 Ti is sipping just around 180 watts versus the 9070 XT's 270 watts. That's again, nearly 100 watts lower in terms of power consumption. Even with tuning, the 9070 XT is simply outclassed in both performance and thermals by the NVIDIA card. In Black Ops 6, undervolting and power limiting the 9070 XT to 85% actually edged out the overclock, delivering around 2% higher average FPS and slightly better lows. Stock performance wasn't far behind either, trailing about 6%. Across all three runs, power consumption stayed below 275 watts, with the power tuned profile holding steady around 268 watts, showing that even in high FPS esports titles, tuning can still offer solid efficiency gains without compromising performance. The RX 9070 XT also comfortably outperforms the 5070 Ti by around 10% on average, and and maintains a similar uplift in 1% lows as well. However, the Nvidia GPU is consuming considerably less power, so there's trade-offs to be had. The lead is clear for the AMD card, but performance per watt is still much better on the Nvidia side. Moving on to Black Myth Wukong.
Kong, the 9070 XT showed virtually no performance differences between stock, undervolted, or the overclocked configuration, with all three landing within 1-2% to in terms of margin. While this might initially seem disappointing, it's worth noting the game's heavy reliance on GPU-bound rendering and poor thread utilization, which limits the impact of frequency scaling. However, the undervolted and power-limited profile reduced the GPU power draw by around 23%, dropping from around 348 watts to just 269 watts, all without any measurable performance loss. Compared to the 5070 Ti, we're looking at about a 10% performance advantage, and the Nvidia GPU is also consuming like 70 watts less, so while it's not a huge performance difference, performance per watt, again, is better on the Nvidia card. In Warhammer Space Marine 2 at 1440p ultra settings, all three configurations of the 9070 XT perform virtually identical in terms of frame rate, with less than a 2% spread between them. The power configuration manages to match the stock performance almost one to one while consuming significantly less power, around 50 watts less in most scenes. The overclock variant, on the other hand, pulls over 340 watts, which is a 30% increase in power for only a slight performance uplift. This is another solid showing for the undervolted and power limited setup, delivering essentially the same gaming experience with much better efficiency. However, when we bring the NVIDIA GPU into the mix, things take a turn for the worse, as the 5070 Ti is about 19% faster on average, and it's able to perform like this while consuming around 220 watts of power, so we're looking at roughly a difference of around 19%, highlighting NVIDIA's performance advantage for this game. In Horizon Forbidden West, at 1440p with very high settings, performance scaling across the 9070 XT configurations is relatively small. The power tune configuration performs just under 2% behind the overclocked profile, while the stock configuration is trailing slightly more at around 5%. Interestingly, the power tune configuration edges out both in frame time consistency, despite running at around 80 watts lower than the overclock configuration. This game clearly isn't maxing out the GPU's potential, so pushing clocks higher doesn't really yield any meaningful gains, and undervolting becomes a more sensible choice here. But when the RTX 5070 Ti is brought in with its own undervolt and power limit, the conversation shifts entirely. It actually edges out the RX 9070 XT in overall power efficiency, coming in with nearly 30% lower power draw while holding up extremely close in performance, within just a few percentage points. It's a clear win for efficiency without sacrificing much in smoothness or frame pacing, highlighting Blackwell's strength. In Lies of P, the RX 9070 XT doesn't show huge performance variation between the three configurations. The undervolted and power limited profile trails the overclock by about 6% in the overall frame rate, but it runs roughly 80 watts lower and maintains considerably lower GPU temps. Even the stock settings aren't far off the pace, staying within a narrow margin of both the tuned variants. What is impressive here is how well the undervolt handles the game, matching or beating the stock power draw by a significant margin while keeping performance extremely close. But when we compare the 5070 Ti and the 9070 XT, both power tuned, the gap becomes a bit more obvious. In Lies of P at 1440p, the 5070 Ti delivers a noticeably higher average FPS at 271 compared to the 220 on the 9070 XT. Even more impressive is the 1% lows, 166 on the 5070 Ti versus 143 on the AMD card, despite pulling around 40 watts less in power. The 5070 Ti in this title manages to pull off much better performance per watt. Across the 10 game average at 1440p, the 9070 XT shows consistent gains with tuning. At stock, it averages 132 FPS, but undervolting with an 85% power limit pushes that up to 135 FPS, and with a full overclock, it reaches 139 FPS with improved 1% lows. The 5070 Ti undervolted still edges out all three configurations, averaging 142 FPS with the best 1% lows at 107. Nvidia's efficiency tuning gives it an edge in real world gaming, something AMD still seems to be struggling with when it comes to the power to performance ratios. So after taking a look at these results, it's clear that overclocking the 9070 XT via an increased power limit just doesn't have any real world benefits. All you're doing is just making the card consume another 30 watts or so on top of stock for a bit of extra performance you really won't be able to notice. The choice then becomes clear, you're better off utilizing the undervolt, lowering your power limit, and then overclocking the memory. This gets you a nice reduction in power, but allows you to maintain stock performance, if not slightly better performance over stock, so it's a win-win situation all around. Unfortunately, despite a fairly aggressive undervolt and power limit, the 5070's Ti still leaves the 9070 XT in the dust in terms of performance per watt, really highlighting just how far ahead the Blackwell architecture is in this regard. So if you're someone who's super conscious about the efficiency or your power bill, or you're going for a small form factor build where heat and thermals can become really problematic if you're not being careful, then the 5070 Ti is the safer bet there. Now, is that price difference between the two worth it? I don't know, only you can really decide that for yourself. As for now, that's going to be wrapping it up for this one. Hope you all enjoyed this, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. 
Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.